The E92 M3 is a needy car, and a lot of those needs are pretty simple. Throttle actuators, etc. don't really blow up your engine, they just might leave you stranded for a little bit. The Achilles heel of the E92 M3 is the rod bearings in the S65. By design, they have an incredibly tight tolerance, which means over time they will wear. It's thought that you can extend the life of these bearings by letting the car warm up properly, not putting any excessive load on until the oil temp is sufficient. And while that's advisable to treat your car well, it is a matter of when, not if, these fail. Rod bearings weren't a huge concern of mine when I bought the car at 36,000 miles, but now that we're up around 81,000, it's time to replace them because a failure means catastrophic failure, it means your engine's toast. I'm certainly not skilled or confident enough to perform this job alone, so I took my car over to Wild Motorsport in Walpole, Massachusetts, and they let me film the entire process. So let me show you what's actually involved in the process of replacing rod bearings and motor mounts. Make sure you replace your motor mounts when you do this. They're probably shot. Most DIY guys tell you to support it just from this hook here. I don't like that. I take out a bolt on this side and I hang a chain on the side of the motor. Just to support it, otherwise the motor will kind of sit like this when you pick it up. To get to your rod bearings, you're gonna to need to remove the under tray, drain the oil, disconnect the power steering, control arms, and everything attached to those front wheels. And then we can support and unbolt the subframe. Now you'll get your first glimpse at how bad your motor mounts are. Which I'm sure are trashed, which I'm excited to have you Actually, with it being stuck on it, it's actually a good sign because most of the time they're just sheared completely off. <laughs> There we go. If this was in my garage right now, I think I'd be having a panic attack. There you go. Yikes. In order to get these torques here, they have a nice little tunnel in the oil pan, but you can't use a regular size Torx. So you need to get this special tool. Basically, it's a quarter inch bit driver. Got it. But I had red Loctited one into a quarter drive quarter inch drive socket and you just light it up in the hole and you're able to access it. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Now you've got access to remove the oil pan and the oil pickups and you'll have access to your rod bearings. So we're gonna take off the, the oil pickups here. You have your, um, this is your scavenge pump which takes your oil from the front of your sump and transfers it to the back of your pump. This is a pickup for the main oil pump. What's up? There's your main oil pump. We're gonna remove all these, and then we're gonna get access to the crank, and we're just gonna turn it over, bank by or uh, <clears throat> section by section, and we'll do one section at a time, removing bolts and caps. Take the cap off, inspect the bearing, push the rod up, take the other bearing off the other side, clean the crank, install new bearings, install new bolts, slide it all together. We got ARP hardware. Mm. Delicious. And we have Calico coated bearings. So this is what they do. They, they're VAC bearings and then they go to Calico for, for the coating. Okay. Yep. All right, ready? Here we go. Okay, let's start. Uh, let's see, let's start with, what is this, cylinder seven. What time is it, Zach? Oh, these are the bottoms. The bottoms are always, you know, the best looking. Lost the bolts right in the garbage. Hey, just in time. Really? Yep. You think so? Oh, yeah. Right on time. Oh boy, that makes me so happy. That's exactly what I wanted to see. I change my oil about every 5,000 miles, and during every oil change, I collect a sample and send it off to Blackstone Labs to see what levels of solids and metals are coming out of my engine. I've received nothing but stellar reports, and as far as these rod bearings are concerned, I'm not surprised. There was no significant wear, but they certainly were on their way out. 
So it's important to keep in mind that when these do fail, it seems that they fail rather quickly. So you might just not pick up on it at a 5,000 mile interval. The difference between functioning and failure might be a lot shorter than that. That's not to say that it's impossible to detect a failure through an oil analysis. A friend of mine recently saved his S65 and his E92 M3 after an oil analysis showed a massive spike in lead. It triggered an immediate replacement of the bearings and the car is fine. The moral of the story is oil analysis is not a fail-safe, but it is a good tool in order to detect something that might be impending doom. You'll also notice that when you remove the caps, the mating surface is not smooth. Each rod is manufactured as a single piece and then fractured so that each cap mates only to one rod. There's two reasons for this. Number one is manufacturing it is a heck of a lot easier because you're not spending time trying to machine finish both surfaces to a certain tolerance so they mate perfectly. The second reason is because they only mate to each other and they have very specific ridges, they're able to mate so tightly that you can't see the seam, making for a stronger connection. This isn't unique to the S65, it's it's pretty common practice in a lot of new engines. So what I'll do is I'll put it up onto the journal and I'll rotate it around just so I can get two fingers on it and then I'll find the notch down here, set it in, and then just push up the other index finger and they pretty much just click right in place. Draw it down, and that's it. Yeah, so that would be me uh, blowing up my engine. <laughs> <laughs> Hardware is an important aspect of this job. Make sure I draw them up nice and even. We use ARP bolts, which requires a very specific torque spec and you torque one time. If you're going to use the stock OEM bolts, keep in mind that it is not a single torque. They are stretch bolts. So there is a lengthy procedure for each bolt to make sure that it is installed properly. <sighs> nice thing about this torque wrench is it counts how many torques you've done. So if you ever question it. Once all the bearings are properly installed, we can start buttoning up and finally replace those motor mounts. These are fluid filled motor mounts. They are these stock motor mounts that I'm replacing them with, mostly because solid motor mounts on the E92 are not very enjoyable to drive on the street. So if you do go with a solid motor mount, be sure you have a good dental plan. When reassembling the car, it's a good idea to clean as you go. Take your time because you don't want to come back here. Ensure that you've cleaned the edges of the oil pan before you reinstall and make sure that that gasket is seated properly. I know that it seems like all the hard work is done, but honestly, reassembling is probably the biggest pain in the ass of the project. So make sure you have a patient friend and also make sure that you're not rushing the job because it's important to remember that you refill that oil and power steering because you've certainly lost fluid along the way. startup procedure calls for 2000 RPM upon startup to make sure that you're feeding oil pressure to the motor and bathing it in fresh 10W60. All is good. Big thanks to Wild Motorsport for doing the job and for Evan, the tech who actually did the job, for letting me shove cameras in his face all day. The S65 community is fraught with contention about which bearings to use, but here's my suggestion. Find a reputable shop, get their ideas about what you should be using, choose a bearing and hardware, and have them installed. Chances are it's going to be a lot safer than running your OEM original bearings to 100,000 miles. So thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive and I'll see you in the next one. Just in case you ever thought an oil change really got all the oil out, now you know. Nope, it doesn't. <laughs> Not even close. There we go. Move to the, the front two. And there it is. That is beautiful. Can't see the two two halves until you actually separate it.